I want to come back to this question of instinct because, I mean, it is, I think there was this old idea that, oh, humans have agency. They're, I mean, obviously we have evol evolutionary drives, but we're not fundamentally governed by instinct. Whereas animals, it's all about instinct. It's all about, you know, evolutionary imperatives. And my sense is that kind of thinking has sort of gone out the window. But I, I don't know. I mean, Ken, how do you think? I, I think that's right. I mean, humans have uh, powerful instincts. Uh, many times we tend to bury them. We have, uh, you know, obvious instincts that drive towards food, uh, a drive towards sex to reproduce and so forth. Um, but there's, you know, an entire field um, that E.O. Wilson once called sociobiology, which is the evolution of social behavior uh, among animals. And when you apply that to humans, uh, you discover some interesting things. And one of those are the instincts we have to behave in certain ways towards people who are blood relatives. And I'll give, I'll give you an example of what I mean. It's sort of a chilling example. Um, there are statistics from the US, from Canada, uh, and from the Scandinavian countries comparing instances of infanticide uh, in families where the father was the biological father of the child victim and where the father was the stepfather. And the instances of infanticide in all cases, fortunately, are extremely rare. But an adopted, a, a, a stepfather, is in various studies uh, anywhere from 50 to 70 times more likely to kill the stepchild than a biological child. Now, that's a chilling statistic, and I remember lecturing about it to my freshman biology class, and I said, it's gonna be shocking, um, so brace yourself. And all of you who come from families with step-parents might wonder how you survived to the age to be university. But even in that case of the stepfather, um, the incidence over a lifetime is something like one in 3,000. So uh, most step parents are loving and effective parents. I believe that absolutely. But what is the instinct that overlays the human tendency towards aggression, human tendency to react violently and so forth, is obviously an, a strong instinct towards the preservation and nurturing of those whom we know and can identify as blood relatives. And I see no other way to sort of uh, account for the origin of that other than to say that is an instinct. And it's an instinct related to something called kin selection. Uh, and kin selection is a, uh, something that happens uh, that basically involves the evolution of altruistic behaviors, self-sacrificing behaviors, which can be favored by evolutionary pressures if they are directed towards those who are close relatives. Because in a way, um, any gene or group of genes motivating such behavior can have an adaptive advantage because that gene is likely engendering behavior that is taking care of copies of itself. Because that's what family members have, is a slice of your own genetic information. So, 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 so those instincts in terms of human behavior are strong even if we don't realize they're there. So let me ask the question in the opposite way. What do you think, and I'm addressing this to any of you, what do you think cannot be explained through what we would call evolutionary psychology or, you know, what E.O. Wilson called sociobiology, you know, that it's, it's not fundamentally about survival, reproduction, or, uh, you know, food. Uh, it's just, you know, the, the, those just don't explain it at all. What, what, what falls outside of those categories in humans or in in other animals. Carl, what would you I, say? Well, I, you know, I was taught all of this stuff very similar to the way you just described it. And I, I, I've always been troubled uh, by, I've always been troubled by that answer because it doesn't, it, it often doesn't seem to ring true. We share almost absolutely all of our genes with each other. And in addition, sex evolved to mix genes. If genes really were obsessed with reproducing themselves, we would all be parthenogenic species. So it's always seemed to me that there's a lot else going on or there's something wrong with some of the theory 
I think there's something right with a lot of the theory, but it's always troubled me. Um, E.O. Wilson's book, Sociobiology, which I loved, simply, to me, simply said, we have no capacities that are not capacitated genetically. We're not just a blank slate that can just self-invent based on capacities we dream up without a genetic template that gives us these capacities. But there may be other answers. I mean, even to the, to the example that you raised, I'm a stepfather, and what comes with being a step-parent? Usually a broken home, a, a dead parent, the, in my case, the rage of my stepdaughter who was mad about everything because she felt that she had to carry the banner for her father. Um, it's difficult. It's not just a biological situation. Um, so I, I just think there's probably other things to it um, I think there's a lot about it that's correct, and I think there are other things that we keep missing because we keep telling ourselves some of the same stories.